This video looks at different items relating to space. This is an item within the grade 6 science curriculum and we're going to have different activities that you can use in your classroom that describe the relative position and motion of different objects within our solar system, that is the Earth, the Moon, the Sun. We're also going to look at uh, designing, creating, building different devices and simulations to help us understand some of the concepts that are within this unit. The Earth rotates about its axis and revolves around the Sun. A good way to introduce this topic to your students is to ask them what they already know about the causes of day and night and the seasonal cycles. The question you could use is, if the Earth goes around the Sun once a year, why does it appear that the Sun goes around the Earth uh, once every day? You could brainstorm that into different groups and have a big class discussion afterwards. In this demonstration, we're going to be using a homemade globe created out of a star foam ball and some felt. You're also going to need a light bulb from any regular lamp, and that's going to simulate the sun for us. Once you have those things, you want to have your students find where they are on the globe and maybe put a pin or a, a sticky note or some form of marking. It appears that we're in uh, Eastern Africa, looks like Kenya today. And once you've pinned that there, you want to ask your students if they can pretend like they're standing there. And from that perspective, when you're turning the globe, ask them when they no longer would be able to see that light, the sunshine. So as you turn the globe after you've turned the light on, it's going to go around and around and all of a sudden they would go to the dark side of the planet and then it would almost appear like they could start seeing it again on the other side. That would be sunrise. And so this is a good example of how the Earth's rotation causes day and night. When introducing the seasonal cycles, you're going to discuss how the Earth revolves around the Sun. But before you start doing that, you're going to want to talk and review the notion of the Earth's axis and how that's tilted at about 23 and a half degrees. Now that axis remains tilted at that amount uh, all the way around the Sun. And the North Pole generally points to the North Star, somewhat of a stationary object in the sky. Now, when the Earth rotates, it rotates in a counterclockwise motion, and it also revolves around the Sun in a counterclockwise motion as well. So, once you introduce the seasonal cycles here, we're going to use a reference point. We've put our pin in about Ontario, Canada, uh, and we're going to introduce the summer solstice first. So, at this point, uh, a reference point on our globe, that's where the Sun's rays hit most directly. And so we can see that here in the northern hemisphere. Now as we go to a second point, we're going to use four, we're going to go to, in the, in the autumn now, the autumnal equinox, which is when the rays hit most directly on the equator. As we move around in our revolution, we're going to get to winter time, where at 23 and a half degrees, the rays most directly point to the southern hemisphere. And you can see where our pin is up here, we're getting direct, uh, indirect sunlight, not as direct as the summer solstice. And then the last one is the vernal equinox when it would be in front uh, in, from your perspective here. A fun activity you can do to explore how the Earth revolves around the Sun and different planetary orbits is to have your students go into the gym or outside and move around a central object. And by doing that, they're going to get an idea of the space and maybe the speed at which they're supposed to move depending on how far they are from the Sun. Interesting concepts to explore. Also, using maybe a flashlight and a paper towel tube, you can talk about uh, indirect versus direct sunlight. And these uh, are, are good connections to the summer solstice and the winter solstice and why we have warmer temperatures and colder temperatures. So that's generally uh, with respect to indirect and direct sunlight and not the distance uh, of the Earth from the sun. A tricky concept for many of us relates to the motion of the moon and the phases of the moon as seen from the earth. Now before we jump into some of those phases, we want to understand how the moon revolves around the earth. It takes roughly 28 days, so that's 28 rotations of the earth. And If you have a simulation in your class where a student could maybe walk around somebody who's representing the earth in the center of the class, it would take 28 rotations 
of the Earth to do that. Now, the moon also rotates itself in 28 days. So that means that its period of revolution around the Earth and its period of rotation are the same. So that means that the same side of the moon is always facing the Earth. So let's take a look at that. A good way of looking at the phases of the moon uh, uses a student in a chair, a um, meter stick, some string, and something to represent the moon, as well as a lamp, which will represent the sun. Now we've set that uh, behind the camera here, but that would be ideally a few meters away from where your student is sitting. And this globe is going to represent our student's head, which is really simulating the earth. And when we turn the lights off and the lamp on, we want to have our students facing the other way, and we're going to simulate a revolution of the moon around our student's head, and they can turn their head to observe what phase of the moon they see. So when it's directly in front of them, opposite our lamp, they're going to see um, a full moon. And then as it goes over here, there's going to be a shadow on the opposite side. They're going to see a quarter moon, and then a new moon, and then a three-quarter moon. We can use this model in a similar way to look at lunar and solar eclipses. As the moon travels around the other side of the Earth and moves into the Earth's shadow, those people on the opposite side of the Earth would see a lunar eclipse. When it revolves around to this side, those people standing where this pin is would see the shadow of the moon cast on top of them and for them, from their perspective, they would see a solar eclipse. Now, in your classroom, you could put a light source in the center, have your students sit around that, and with a tennis ball or a foam ball and a pencil or something, they could simulate solar and lunar eclipses themselves by moving that moon around their head, which would ultimately be the Earth as well. Or maybe if you had it at the front of the class, you could have a semicircle of students. That's a neat way to explore it as well.